Bookland. We have an incredible show for you today. The NFC East. We're talking Cowboys, Eagles, and even the Redskins and Giants. We'll talk about them too. It's going to be a great show. Just wait. We got a lot of interesting information on Evan Ingram, so check it out. Hey, ballers. This is Waz from Chicago, a jointhefoot.com supporter, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. What's going on? Oh, oh I thought someone was going to hit me with a, what's up? What's up? <laughs> oh my goodness. That is going way back. I still remember the Super Bowl when the when was that happened? when the was up was going on. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh yeah, you go I back was to in. The, I the was mic in was on all that. in. Yes. The playground the next day was just full of what's up. <laughs> the reason I, I if you noticed the intro to the show and if you've been a listener, you know that we have listeners introduce the show mm -hmm. uh, quite often. It's one of the perks of being a supporter at jointhefoot.com of the podcast. But that was Waz. That was uh, Waz see. NFL. That yes, was yes. a new addition to our DFS. Now, he's a longtime supporter. But this year for our DFS pass, we also have Waz. Yes. Robert Waziak. Letting and, people know Waz. <laughs> He the is contributing. I bet he's never heard that. No, never. <laughs> yeah, he was. That was the worst day of his <laughs> life. If your last name it's, is basically "What's up," that's the worst day of your life. It's like everyone named Jake, because now you are Jake from State Farm. Yes, and they want to punch you in Nightmare. the face. Nightmare. <laughs> Nightmare. Yeah. Um, we have a great show today. We have the NFC East divisional breakdown right here on the podcast. We don't have to talk about. The Bills and the Dolphins, and we already did that. Oh, man, that was... That was Tuesday. We did, we did it. We made it through. We powered through. Yes. We got there. Uh, it is July 11th. That's when you're listening to this. We're recording it a couple of days before because we are, as of this uh, recording, in San Francisco for the live show. Um, but I'm excited to talk about the NFC East. There's a lot of very interesting players. We'll get you caught up on what happened this offseason with each of those teams. It's America's division. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, obviously. You got Washington, you got the, D.C. You got the Cowboys. America's you got team. recent champion Eagles. They're on TV as much as any other division. If not, I'll, I'll bet you that they lead the way with primetime appearances. That would be my guess. Well, people know this already, but like Dallas became America's team because of, you know, just how much they were on TV. And like, I grew up in Arizona with a bunch of family that was from different states, and they were all Cowboys fans. Well, and at that time, er, earlier when the Cardinals were not here, Arizona was Cowboy territory. It was. It was. So, um, yeah, we'll get into the NFC East today. We'll get into the mailbag if we have some time. There's not a lot of news going on. Nothing really new from Tuesday, so we won't be spending any time there. But I do have a quick question, guys. This is a uh, bit of a late-round gold question. Who is someone you've been consistently grabbing in the very last round of your mock drafts? I'll jump in here first, and, and especially in the best ball format. Ted Ginn Jr. is free. He's on one of the best offenses in the league. And he, yes, I'm not this this is not me filing a formal proclamation of saying that Ted Ginn is the wide receiver too. Traquan Smith certainly could grab that mantle and and rule Ted Ginn irrelevant. But Ted Ginn is still on that team. He was still involved last year before he went down to the injury. He was averaging about seven targets a game, and he was he was fantasy relevant until the injury, where it not a top not top twenty four guy, but if you're in a, a three wide receiver league, Ted Ginn was absolutely a playable guy when he was healthy. If you listen to Drew Brees talk about the offense this year he spoke recently about Jared Cook and his excitement for Cook, but he's talked a lot about Traquan Smith. And he literally said, I 
I, you have to make a jump this year. This is going to be the jump year for Traquan Smith. Was and he, he talked about Ted Ginn as well. And the thing is, is was he when he was talking about Smith? Because I'm not familiar with the the interview you're talking about. Was he say was he kind of challenging him, or was he saying this is going to happen? Traquan Smith. He, it was is, more in the connotation of look, I love Traquan. He's going to make a big jump this year. Okay, that's not not so much like you're struggling. But the point is, is in the NFL you start three wide so often that Traquan and Ted Ginn will be out there. Yeah. I like the call. If it were me, I would say Traquan because I would want to know if something new was happening with Traquan with that last pick of the draft. I would go Michael Thomas. Oh, you, with, with my last, last pick. With yes. your last Curse selection? you. It's, oh, I J win. Jason jumping in with the analysis. Why don't you share your final, sure, my, final pick? Sure. My final pick is an NFC East quarterback. Uh, and when you say, well, your last pick, yeah, the, uh, I often, when I'm doing mock drafts or even real drafts, my last pick might be a quarterback. If there's if there's guys in that ninth, tenth, eleventh, you know, round where I pref I'm, I I want to take another shot on these guys, and there's still a handful of quarterbacks. One of the quarterbacks that often is found in that twelfth round is Dak Prescott. I think he's look. I mean, all he's done his entire career has been a top twelve quarterback. He's consistent. He was better with Amari Cooper than before. If I can get that, I'm fine. I mean, I look. You know, he's no Pat Mahomes. But I've got a stacked roster, and I think he's fine as as a last round uh, pick. Okay, yeah, Dak is interesting for sure. Yeah, um, I'll throw two names out there: Matt Burita, running back for the San Francisco 49ers, Devin Funchess, wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts. Both are going very late in drafts, twelfth to fourteenth round. Both are players that I think could be. Uh, what what I would call like a interesting week one discovery. Like I'm going to know something. In week one, I'm going to get to see what the San Francisco backfield really looks like with McKinnon, Coleman, Burita pretty quick. But Funchess, more so, is going to be very interesting in week one. Even if I don't believe in him, which I don't really believe in him as a talent, he's the kind of guy that could have two touchdowns week one, and I could flip him. I can trade him. Yep. I'm not going to have to wait three or four weeks to figure something out. I would just be taking the shot on Funchess because Luck could throw four in week one and two of them could be to Funchess the way two or three were to Ebron last year. Yeah, we say this all the time, but when you draft those late round guys, you want a guy where you're going to figure it out week one. You're going to know, is he involved the way we hope or not? So, Kalen, Kalen Balazs? <laughs> uh, you, you hate him so much I, your throat revolts against my you. body rejects saying Kalen <laughs> Balage. you had some Balage in your throat but oh. in the last round that's a guy where you know look you're gonna cut him after week one I'm pretty confident it was about fine, that Andy was fine it was a fine joke <laughs> I'm just I'm just feeling bad I don't bad. care about his analysis I'm just I feeling care about bad the for Balage <laughs> his last name is like Flim mm. Kalen Flim we got to a good place here um Okay, yeah, I, I believe the thread of uh, that you were trying to get through our jokes was the fact that, yeah, you want to know what's going to happen. Yeah, you'll be able to cut him week one. Sure. Or you well, find or out not. he's more involved, which he shouldn't be. Shout out to the Foot Clan. We appreciate all your support at jointhefoot.com. You can also support the show by following us on Twitter and Instagram at the FF Ballers. The website is thefantasyfootballers.com. We have a great staff of writers producing amazing content all of the time. You can always find something new to read about. Uh, you can visit the community at jointhefoot.com. You can also subscribe. We appreciate your reviews. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, ad-free on Stitcher Premium. You can head to YouTube. Wherever you want to consume fantasy content, we make it available to you. And then one final note before we get into the division breakdowns, a reminder FootClanGiveaway.com. Yeah. This month, we're giving away a signed Patrick Mahomes jersey, courtesy of Pristine Auction. You can enter to win for free at FootClanGiveaway.com. You help us, we help you possibly win a Patrick Mahomes signed jersey. That's right. That's right. Uh, like I said, not a lot of news going on, so we're going to jump right into the NFC East. Let's get divisional. All right. The NFC East last year, the Dallas Cowboys won the division 10 and six. The Philadelphia Eagles made the playoffs at nine and seven Redskins seven and nine. 
New York Giants, 5-11. and 11. Here's a quick question. That's pretty impressive, that Washington. It is everything impressive. Everything that that team went through ended yes. up 7-9. and nine. Yes, and they scored only 281 points on the season. Holy crap. I was going to ask you, because when that I. That point differential. Blah. Would you rather be Redskins fans mm. or Dolphins fans? Both finished 7-9 and nine last Ooh. year. Which team would you be more inclined to kind of like their future? Man. I mean, if things go south for Reds Washington, they're going to need a brand new head coach this year, probably. I would say the Redskins. I think the fact that you have your future quarterback well, they've, in tow, they or they have, hope. they've taken the shot. Sure, sure, but I mean, shoot or uh, shoot. There's, I, I think there's hope there for the future with all the injuries, all the problems over the last few years. You've still been okay. I don't think Gruden is a bad coach, so you're, you know. I would rather be a Redskins fan in this moment than a Dolphins fan and have to punt this whole season waiting for what could be a bright future next year. Watch Miami win 11 games next year. <laughs> Just blow everybody away. Those type of things happen. The NFL is strange. But, yes, the Giants at 5-11 and 11 with Saquon uh, drafted Daniel Jones. We'll talk about them. But let's start at the top. The Cowboys – Man, it was an interesting year. They obviously had so much success uh, the year prior. Last year, it was a bit of a struggle. They got it going towards the end of the season with the acquisition of Amari Cooper. Ezekiel Elliott, one of, if not the most dominating forces on the running game. Last year, the Cowboys were 10th in the league in rushing yards per game, 23rd in passing yards per game. Uh, this past offseason, no more Terrence Williams, no more Cole Beasley in the offense. They did add Randall Cobb to the wide receiver core. Um, let's talk about the big storylines. Zeke is uh, <clears throat> Zeke is a first or second pick in most drafts. Yep. Amari Cooper's going in the back of the third round. Dak, uh, who Jason just brought up, he's going in the 11th or 12th round right now. And then Jason Witten is returning. He's an addition, right? Yes, he is. He's not an addition that you want for your fantasy roster, but he is an addition – for Dak Prescott, a safety valve on those important third downs. They'll get him in there. Reliable, good, you know, obviously just a super solid outlet. And honestly, I believe that this is Dak Prescott's best receiving core that he's ever had. Even going back to when you had a dominant Dez and not much around him, but a year two Michael Gallup, an Amari Cooper as, a, as your one, a safety valve in Jason Witten. You're actually using Zeke in the passing game now. All of those. Oh man, you didn't even mention Randall Cobb. <laughs> Poor Randall. Well, I was going to say, how the like, mighty have fallen. Is it really better than what he had with Cole Beasley at the end of last year? I don't know if I would agree with that. Cobb versus Beasley this is a wash. Oh, Beasley's much better. Sure, maybe maybe he's better, but the team around him, the other pieces. That's, that's why I didn't mention Randall Cobb. I think is is better. So you know, since we already talked about Dak a little bit, just some stats so that you know. Once Amari Cooper got there. You had Dak really change from, uh, you know, he, he became more of a pocket passer. He ran the ball a little less, which usually isn't good for fantasy unless you're succeeding in the passing game, which he was. From weeks nine on, he was the quarterback six. He was a top, a top half quarterback one ahead of, during that stretch, Aaron Rodgers, Andrew Luck. I mean, he's a guy that's done it before, rushes uh, plenty of touchdowns in. I believe he averages six, six a year. A year. Yep. So and, and he's the type and style when they get down there where it's not like Matt Ryan's three last year, which aren't common. They'll probably go away, Matt Ryan. Right, where, where Dak gets down there and it's like, you're, you're selling out to stop Zeke. It's strange because um, you brought up Dak. He's in our ultimate draft kit as a value. I get all that. I get where he ends up on the year. But if I'm a fantasy owner and I'm facing off against my opponent and his quarterback is Dak Prescott, I'm not that scared well, right now. You're not scared at the quarterback, but what That's getting what I mean. Dak Prescott allows is the rest of your roster to be super strong at all those positions because you, you took your quarterback right, late. Right, no, it makes sense. Um, the huddle has the 2019 offensive line ranked at number eight. Another strong, uh, you know, this is a strong unit. It's been a strong unit for years. Uh, let's talk about Amari Cooper. Mike, maybe rehash a little bit of your – Feelings, emotions, analysis. Yeah, uh, yeah. You love. brought this up Go. a few weeks ago, but I feel like it's worth bringing up again. Let's hang with Mr. Cooper. 
Yeah, let's talk about uh, let's talk about him. So, <laughs> or not thank, hang with him in your you. case, right? I mean, the problem with Amari Cooper is that he is he is simply not consistent. He gives you these absolute blow up games, and at the end of the of the year, like those numbers, which we all go to a lot, you know, from week X to week Y, he averaged out. He was this wide receiver, and you can do those exact same. Uh, a stat, statistical gymnastics with Amari Cooper from the time that he became a Cowboy. Like, once once he was traded to be a Cowboy, he was a wide receiver one. He was an absolute top option. Meanwhile, you were happy with him in about three of those games because it was really disappointing the other times where I am not in on the on a wide a player being drafted as a wide receiver one who has the career bust rate of Amari Cooper. This could be the year. Absolutely. We this could be the year that Amari Cooper turns it around. There's just such a career of him. We're we've already seen four full years of Amari Cooper doing this, where he's a great wide receiver. He's incredibly talented. Something is just missing, and that is he is very inconsistent and it's just not someone I'm drafting as my wide receiver one. If he's my two Okay, I'm more interested in that, but that's not where he goes in drafts. People draft him as a one. Historically in his career, I believe the numbers we looked at, 66% of the time you're disappointed in the performance yeah. you get from him. It's funny using the same uh, kind of guideline of, hey, I, I'm looking at my opponent's team. He has Dak Prescott. I'm not scared. I'm looking at my opponent's team. He has Amari Cooper. I am scared. I am scared. I'm going to draw the short straw. Of the big blow-up week. Of the big week where he scores three touchdowns on 220 yards. If there was ever a situation that Amari Cooper should show some semblance of consistency, you'd believe it was here in Dallas. Now, the reason it's harder to believe is we got to see him in Dallas do the same thing he did in Oakland. Yeah, no, he, he does have the full offseason. That's what I'm saying. So it could be a different year. But when the wide receivers behind him currently the, the the next 10 wide receivers they only had that that rate of finishing as a wide receiver three or worse 44 percent of the time those are the guys going after Amari Cooper an average of 44 percent of the time you're disappointed that they are three or worse meanwhile Amari Cooper's in that 66 percent it's just that's that's tough to draft him right there knowing that he will have the big blow up games and win you a week but will will it be enough or will he just crush you three-fourths of the time. All right, a couple other storylines with Dallas. First one is you brought up the, the receiving core. You've got Amari Cooper diagnosed, figured out, you know where he's being drafted. But Michael Gallup, Randall Cobb, the other pass catchers, do you have any interest in late-round flyers on somebody like Gallup to take the next step, on somebody like Cobb to be a PPR target, maybe better than we think he will be, because of the volume Cole Beasley received, because of Dak's, you know, seventy-one percent completion percentage last year, that was on the back of Cole Beasley, right? Yeah, the the struggle for going in on on Michael Gallup or Randall Cobb is last year they were twentieth in passing plays per per game, or, or I'm sorry, overall with five hundred sixty-three passing plays. That's that's just not enough volume to sustain of, of any consistent basis, even though I think Michael Gallup is a, a good wide receiver. He was a third-round pick. That's a pretty high investment for the team. But instead of grooming him to be the next guy, they went out and got Amari Cooper. Yeah, I, I, I agree that, that the those options, they will get better. Cobb could have a decent year. You know, but the Over volume, under 65 receptions for Randall Cobb. I would take the under based on health. Okay. Yeah, he only played six last year, fourteen the year before, ten the year before that. You can yeah. Go, so go uh, you know the the issue here is passing volume. This is not. This is a team that succeeds because of Zeke. Their offensive line. They run the ball like crazy, and that's why Zeke is my number one running back. You've all. He's always been in the conversation, right? The last few years, he's been a top three back. He's always on a, a per game basis a top three back. If you look since he's been in the league, ninety three. 0.7% of his games, he is an RB2 or better. He just doesn't have bust games. Right. 70% of his games, he's an RB1. He's great. And then the, the, the dream happened last year where he started catching the ball. Once Amari Cooper got there, it even went up, not down. He was on pace for 118 targets 
that's he stopped that, batting it down. Yes, he the, started catching it. Well, it has never been a catch. I mean, he's always <laughs> had the today, skills, Dick. but not, yeah. not yet. Dak, not yet. Dak finally realized, or you know, something with the the offensive coordinating, whatever it was. They're like, oh, you know what? <laughs> Zeke's really good at catching <laughs> the ball. Is, this seems to be working around the NFL. Well, it's just getting him in space, and he's capable enough to yeah. make the catch, get in space. Yeah, so is he it worth, could be an eighty plus catch player this year. Do you worry about handcuffing Ezekiel Elliott? That's a question a lot no. of fantasy owners will ask. I'm a no. I'm a no. I'm a no because you don't know if it's if it's Tony Pollard or or Mike Weber. You just you just don't know at this point. And a, a plus mark for Zeke is superstar center Travis Frederick should be back. If you remember, he he was a a late scratch last year with I. Don't even know how to pronounce the the syndrome, but it was it was a it's a very is it the serious bar or whatever it is. Yeah, is Boolean. It? Oh, bar. never mind. I, mean, I, I sound yeah. like a fool right now trying to pronounce it, but uh, the him being back is a big deal because that was the the pick where it was mocked in the NFL draft that they took him so high, and then he's just been an absolute dominant force. And when you have a dominant center, it's a huge. Huge boon for your running game. Yes, and and I believe that as of right now he's he has not been back at at the, no, the mini camp just, yet, but he is on track. Yes. All right. Before we get into the Eagles, I want to take a moment and thank a sponsor, No Bull. Mm. It's time. No messing around here. To demand more for your workout gear, No Bull is a footwear, apparel, and accessory brand for people who train hard and don't believe in excuses. Like me. <laughs> How'd, I would never say that. Don't let the simple design fool you. No, no Bulls gear is built to perform. I've been wearing my No Bull trainers for like the past couple of weeks. I love them. You have. They are very And sharp. I have a lot of other pairs of shoes, and I've worn these by choice because they're great. They're comfortable. They look nice. They're made with extremely durable, breathable, and abrasion-resistant material uh, that moves with you. Suitable for things like, you know, epic pickleball battles, whatever mm -hmm. training you're doing. No gimmicks, no excuses. I love them. If you're ready to challenge your gear the way you challenge yourself, go to nobullproject.com slash footballers today. For people who put in the work day after day, you know, like us, like mm -hmm. us. Yeah, uh, hey, I have been. Uh, visit nobullproject.com slash footballers to check out their training gear that is nobullproject.com backslash footballer. N-O-B-U-L-L. Right. That is correct. That is correct. All right, let's talk about the Philadelphia Eagles, probably the team, player, offense, sleeper, that I, I have Break the out. most excitement of any team in football. Uh, this was a team that obviously won the Super Bowl two seasons ago, had coach Doug Peterson. They went 9-7 and seven last season, and that was with injuries to Carson Wentz and then handing the ball back over to Nick Foles. Mm -hmm. and Among many names. That is one of the names they call him Nick. That's one of the <laughs> names they call him. And this team, they went at it this offseason to equip Carson Wentz, who was, uh, who was newly paid for your extension, but they equipped him. They brought in Jordan Howard at running back. They brought in Deshaun Jackson at wide receiver. They drafted a player that I know you guys both love, J.J., our Sega Whiteside. Yeah. They drafted Miles Sanders with one of the highest draft picks they have ever spent on the running back position. After trading for Jordan Howard to bolster that, they're like the whole Josh Adams, it didn't Corey work. Clement experiment. They're like, man, it would be nice to, to run <laughs> to the have ball. a good running back again. They couldn't run the ball last year. 28th in the NFL in rushing yards per game. 7th in passing yards per game. This is a team that wants to be able to uh, hand the ball off. And maybe it's a committee. Maybe it's Miles Sanders. Maybe it's Miles Sanders and Jordan Howard around the goal line. That's the belief around Philadelphia is you're going to have um, both of those guys having opportunities on the field. We need to see more from Miles Sanders in the preseason. But let's talk about the running back court to begin with. What's the ceiling for a player like Miles Sanders in this Philadelphia offense? The the ceiling for Miles Sanders is an RB1 because it's it's a great offense if he turns into a three-down back. But do you believe he is going to? I don't. I do not either. I, I don't. I mean, it, Jordan Howard 
is Jordan Howard is still good at what he does. He's not a very versatile back, but sometimes you only need a light switch to do one thing, right? And so if he's good at being a running back, he can get up the middle and still get yards. He's going to be used. Do we have a status update on what's going on with Darren Sproles? I believe he is aging out of the league. Right, but I, I mean, I, he, you know, he—he's uh, still a free agent. They didn't okay. resign him. That's that's what the, I mean. Is, but has there been any buzz? Because last I heard, he he was going to retire, and then he said, "Well, no, maybe I'm going to come back." And then after that happened, they went out and got Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders, and I really doubt Darren Sproles tags along. I, th right. I think Fair they enough. would take him back, though. I there's a lot of talk. Look, Miles Sanders to get on the field, you're going to have to pass protect as a rookie. You're going to have to be able to to play a three down type of role. You got to be able to pass protect to catch the ball. Because he's his skill set is one that at Penn State and I believe will translate to the NFL is a great pass catching option, but you got to pass protect to do it. You got to keep Carson Wentz, your franchise investment, upright until he proves he could do that. He's not going to earn the lion's share of carries and work. I in one I had two two dynasty leagues. In one I drafted David Montgomery, in the other I drafted Miles Sanders. You were at the third spot in both leagues. At the leagues. third spot in both leagues. Um, because I see just different things out of both players. Miles Sanders has the ability to potentially take, you know, third down. That's not something I think that Tariq Cohen needs to give up. He's great. Right. Tariq Cohen is amazing at that. So Miles Sanders, I think, has a little bit of a higher ceiling. I think Montgomery's floor is higher. Um, but this offense is going to be very, very interesting this year. And it's the reports out of Philadelphia, at least right now, I mean, it's hard to know because we're so early in the process and Miles Sanders has been hurt, so we we aren't sure what the, they will end up doing. But as of right now, they believe Jordan Howard will get the short yardage work. Does that extend to a third and go, or a, to yeah. goal, to go for the goal for three yards? It's that's, probably going to be Howard. That's troublesome for Miles Sanders if, if you want him to actually hit that ceiling. The biggest problem is they're going back-to-back -back in fantasy drafts right now. They're, seven, they're both late seventh-round picks. As of today, Sanders will rise yeah. if he gets healthy and shows in the camp and preseason. You can't spend even if even if Howard drops to the eighth. Are you going to spend a seventh and eighth round pick on those two players no. when you know that other people are going to rotate I, in? I would spend on Miles Sanders. Yeah, that's and what I would, I would do. Too. I would avoid uh, Howard as of right now. But the the real issue here, the the real uh, reason that one of these, if not both of these, backs can have a really good year is because this offense is going to be awesome like I, I the the weapons here for Carson Wentz who you can't forget he played the entirety of a season as a as an MVP candidate before getting injured he is now back brace off every beat writer talking about how awesome he's been in camp throwing touchdowns left and right he and is his the weapons goal. man he, he's like you go panning for gold and you find some but it's dirty and you just throw it back. That's what like you just wash it off for a second. Take a deeper look at Carson Wentz, MVP candidate, even last year's pace. If you look at 16 game pace, yes, he was hurt. 4,400 yards, 30 touchdowns, 10 picks, improved his completion percentage, 10%. Oh, and then we're going to give you a player that has in Deshaun Jackson that has always changed the output and production of fantasy quarterbacks from his entire uh, tenure in the NFL you're going to bring in Arcega Whiteside, another red zone threat. You've got Dallas Goddard, mm. who, uh, as mm. a secondary option behind Zach Ertz, is going to give you three or four plays a game because the, the offense is focused on Jeffrey and DJX and these other players. The, the opportunity there, look, I think Carson Wentz leads the league in yardage. I think he probably wins the MVP this year. I, I'm I, Mike. Uh, Mike is not on the Carson Wentz train as much as Andy and I are. Correct. I, I feel like I'm. I've. I've because of but Andy's you are proclaimed on the love. Train. I. Ha I am hitching a ride on your wagon because I am all in on Carson Wentz. Yes. I think he is going to have a fantastic year. The fact that he is not being drafted as he was a couple years ago because of the injuries is great news for fantasy owners. He can actually be a late round quarterback eighth, in the middle past, of the eighth round right now. Right. In the past, you're going to have to take him in the fourth or fifth round. Now you're getting him in the middle of the eighth, the weapons. I mean, when you get around the red zone, who are you going to guard? Like, are you going to stop Alshon and JJ, uh, you know, our Sega white side and, and Zach Ertz. Ertz and Goddard, who's a great red zone weapon. Stop uh, talking about Goddard. You, you, dude, the problem is, is, 
it's easy to make fun of his impassioned love for Goddard because you and I know the ceiling for Goddard as a fantasy player is limited. Yes. But the value of Dallas Goddard to Carson Wentz in the offense is unbelievable. He's a great player. Yes. yes. Agreed. And you like Jack Doyle, so don't even talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, I want to give you a chance to speak as to some of the maybe the red flags that you see around Carson Wentz in the offense. Um, but you also like Alshon. So maybe talk about both well, those guys, Mike, and and – you know, the undervalue that you see right now with Alshon's draft position. Right. I, I like Alshon. I mean, he's a 1,000-yard he's a type of receiver. I, I brought up uh, people are mad at Alshon because he busted so much this past year when that hasn't been his M.O. It, it, he was last year was a wide receiver one or two, over 46% of the time. He, that's solid. Those are solid numbers, especially for a player that you're drafting now in the sixth round. But his bust rate was horrendous before that, though it, it was not. It was down in the 30% range, which is still acceptable for for the player that you want to get an Alshon. For Wentz, I mean, it's it's really tough for me to go all in. I mean, you want you want to make who is your uh, th the Devonte Adams thousand yard jokes where he would have just never passed a thousand yards Carson Wentz has never thrown for over 4,000 yards Carson Wentz has passed 3,700 yards once in his career it's been a short career only three years but short seasons too it, that's, that's part the of the that's part of the problem I mean so you're some fa guy, you're factoring in yes. the availability risk you yes. said this morning in the office you would go Baker Mayfield over yes, Carson Wentz, I would in a draft. You get him in the same value. You would take Baker Mayfield. Yes, I would. If if this is just apples to apples, I would much rather have Baker Mayfield. Okay. I mean, I look. There's a reason he's being drafted at eight oh five. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that he hasn't been able to stay healthy. He can live up to all these expectations for six games, and he will not help your fantasy team as a value from week seven through sixteen if he's hurt. But who cares? I mean, like with Cam Newton and Carson Wentz, I mean, we're we're always talking about streaming the quarterback, playing someone off of waivers, not getting locked into one guy. That's a better strategy for success in fantasy football. So it's like if he's healthy, he's gonna be dominating. If he's injured, whatever. Pivot, go to go to another quarterback. You can do that mid season. You can't do that at other positions. So that's where I like drafting the 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 lower you know, I, I avoid injury risk, but at quarterback Cam Newton, Carson Wentz, if they're healthy week one, that's all that matters. That, that's the hard thing for Carson Wentz. For me, we're talking just actual draft price because going behind Carson Wentz, Kyler Murray, Jared Goff, Cam Newton, that's – Those are all great. That's that's really tough to pay up for Carson Wentz when two rounds later I can get quarterbacks who I see as, as equal or, in fact, even better. All right. Um – Zach Ertz had 116 receptions last season. Oh, yeah, we haven't really even mentioned Zach Ertz. <laughs> he had 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. His uh, season, the season before, he had eight touchdowns as well. But we talk about Kittle regressing from these record-setting numbers. Zach Ertz, 116 receptions. I can't imagine we see 116 again from, from Ertz. No, Zach Ertz will uh, definitely have a worse season this year than last year, but don't think that that's he's still going to be the the second or third best tight end in the league he is a, a positional difference maker if you want to solidify that position and you don't want to stream it I don't blame you I think Zach Ertz is a fine pick where he's going right now in drafts but that doesn't mean he replicates what he did last year there's too many other options now with the year two uh, Goddard and Sega and D Jackson and, and those for for Zach Ertz to just get all of the targets I'd be remiss of this love affair with the Philadelphia Eagles, if I don't mention Deshaun Jackson, do you? I believe Deshaun Jackson is an incredible value in fantasy yes, drafts. Completely agree. He's basically, you know, he's an eleventh round pick. I believe you can flex him week one of the NFL season. Do you guys buy into the fact that he he could be drafted to play as opposed to just wait and see what he does in the offense? Uh, yes, I agree. I agree that if you draft him, you should plug him in because you're going to have to take those shots week in and week out in order to get his big games. I'm not a huge redraft Deshaun Jackson type of owner. Like I, I best ball sign me up where I don't have to I don't have to have the games where he's the third or fourth target on the team and it doesn't get the long bomb touchdown. Is he a value? Will he outproduce his 
end of season ranking for where he's going right now? I think so. He is another player that I hate seeing on my opponent's roster. Even if he's going to be Amari Cooper esque in his blow up games, I one play. One play is all it takes. So, Jay, let me do some comparison for you because this is, this could be a hypothetical choice you have to make. It's okay. it's late. So, I mean, you're talking – you're entering the 11th round or you're at the back of the 10th, What, whatever. So, Deshaun Jackson or James Washington? A Deshaun Jackson. Marquez Valdez-Scantling. MVS. Devin Funches. I think I go Funches there. Gross. Kiki, <laughs> Kiki QT. Uh, if it's a full PPR, I would go QT. QT. Okay. Otherwise, I would go uh, Deshaun Jackson. And I'm reverting. No, 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 Funches. I would take DJX over Funches. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that, it, it didn't. Official it didn't with feel traction. good after I said it. The, the right. verb. The verb will go back down. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're gonna cough some Balage. Uh, <laughs> Out of your throat. Yeah. The Redskins at seven and nine last season, they have struggled so much with injuries over the past couple of years. We yeah, went- maybe take a look at that, Washington. Seriously, at, at what point do you turn the finger on yourself? <laughs> yes. I mean, well, it's like not fair, but if it keeps happening over and over and over and over and over, and over the finger. there's yes, <laughs> sometimes you need to go to a mirror and give yourself the finger. The Redskins. Well, it's two. There's two lines of discussion with the injuries there. There's just been the, like, players get hurt a lot. Their depth chart at running back keeps dwindling every it's season. It's not just the running backs, so their the, offensive line. Yes, and then there's the recovery. Because right. yes. you just happen to have Alex Smith and Darius Geis struggle with post-surgery infections, slash, you know, need to be um, worked on again. The Redskins, they found the fountain of youth in Adrian Peterson. Last offseason – it was all about Darius guys. This offseason, I'm not all about Darius guys. They re-signed Adrian Peterson. They drafted Bryce Love. Whatever. I don't care. He won't. He's I don't care. coming off a torn ACL as well. He's not going to be ready to start the season. But Chris Thompson is there. Yes, <laughs> believe it or not, Samaj P. Ryan is there. Yeah! And, uh, Let's go! <laughs> look, Darius guys. I've said this before. I don't think this is the year you get the payoff for the excitement for Darius guys. He's a fifth round pick. He's the end of the fifth round. Are either of you guys taking that shot, Jason? I already see you shaking no, your head. No, no, no way. There are really valuable players in the fifth round. I'm not taking an option of a non-pass catching running back dealing with injury who will probably be splitting time with Adrian Peterson at the start of the year. That's not how I want to get my fantasy team off and rolling. No way would I take Darius guys there. I lean. No, I guess my heart says that I I want to, but I would not. There was a time in the off season when I did want to, when I traded and acquired him in a right. dynasty league for the excitement of having that potential three down back. This was before Adrian Peterson was resigned. It was before some of the information came out about guys having issues with recovery. Uh, oh, I'm only running in a straight line right now. I expect him to be back, but there's no way he's getting this massive workload. And this offense, it struggled last season. I mean, this was a rushing offense that was 17th in football. Peterson did what he could, but like you said, they were beat up. And then in the passing offense, it was atrocious. 28th in the league, they invested a draft pick on Dwayne Haskins. They don't have the kind of weapons that when you, at first glance, you look at this team and say, explosion. They're, uh, explosion. It's, it's rebooting. They're, they're absolutely rebooting the, the passing offense with, with Dwayne Haskins. Josh Doxson, I mean, the, the ship has sailed for Josh Doxson to emerge as a the a first-round type of wide receiver for your team. He could be fine, but this this will likely be his last year on Washington. But like I said, the full reboot uh, where you have Kelvin Harmon, who some people liked. He actually went later in the draft. The more interesting guy to me is Terry McLaurin, who was teammates with Dwayne Haskins. They spent a third-round pick which is pretty solid draft capital on a, on a wide receiver. I'm not excited to get him you in a redraft bring, bring now, but I want up. the name to be up because in the first couple of weeks, he could be one of those waiver wire featured guys. I think Trey Quinn is more likely to be that guy. That's where I would go with Washington. Like Of, of all the pass catchers that I could possibly find value in, Trey Quinn could be the Kiki QT PPR producer yes, for the could. Redskins. 
I don't want to touch any of them. Yeah. What about Jordan Reed? I'm interested. <laughs> the rule is not a rule anymore. Him. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of those players that I will not be able to quit ever. He's free. He's a free tight end shot. He's productive when he's on the field. Yeah, but he doesn't have a quarterback. Look, Dwayne Haskins, maybe you believe in Dwayne Haskins. You think he's got a bright future. He doesn't strike anyone as the guy that's going to come in and light the league on fire year one. What he's if it's, probably case, what not if it's even, Case Keenum, though, for the first half, Jason? You I, love Case Keenum. I assume it is Case Keenum to start week one as of right now, and – and Case Keenum doesn't do it for me for, for Jordan Reed. There, I, I, I'm racking my brain here thinking, is there a single Washington Redskin player that I would draft in fantasy football? And I think the answer is probably no. Maybe Chris Thompson with my last pick, but I don't feel great about that either. Adrian I mean, Peterson at the end of the 10th round? Uh, with clenched on, teeth and your eyes closed? Yeah, sure. If I have to. Like if this is like <laughs> if I ha so no th no the, the answer, answer to is, that is no <laughs> is this is a team where because of the quarterback murkiness the rookie coming in probably after a few games Case Keenum you know is is a, you know a, a lame duck here all the running backs all the injuries no great wide receivers I, I just want to avoid this this roster There's certain teams a fantasy that, wasteland yeah I, d I don't want to play I don't want to play here Jordan Reed through the first 11 games of the season was averaging over seven targets a game, almost five receptions in nearly 50 yards. With Alex Smith. Yes. Yeah, see, I'd feel a lot better with Alex Smith. Yeah, if he was there, I'd be interested in Jordan Reed. Okay. there are. It's just strange because Greg Olson, Jordan Reed, Tyler Eifert, Delaney Walker, those were four of the most heralded yeah. tight end names of the past you know, five years, and they're all basically going to be free this year. So people can – take their pick of the kind of maimed and injured has-beens at the tight end position, maybe steal some value. At least if you don't, you can drop them and sign somebody else. But I think you're right. I mean, I, this is one of the wide receiver cores you're avoiding, one of the offenses you're avoiding in fantasy. I Yeah. Uh, if I'm, I'm with Jason, I'm probably not drafting anyone. If I do, it would be Jordan Reed. And keep your eye on the tea leaves, though, for Darius Geis. Even if you don't draft him, I'm saying – Watch the usage. Watch the snap count for him because if you see it trending up, starting to change, you maybe you go after him. Even if they're even if the production is not there yet, you just see the the, the winds of change happening for him because he's if he's healthy, he is he is very very good. He is a very good running back. You yeah yeah. Uh, the Giants at five and eleven. Let's talk about the Giants who start the season. On the road against Dallas, uh, last season 24th in rushing yards per game, but Saquon was a monster because he caught so many passes. Yes. Last year, 11th in passing yards per game. That's an important number to me because we're going to talk about what could happen on this offense over the course of the year and what that means to the fantasy options. And that's because of the quarterback position and the number six overall pick, Daniel Jones, does he take over? Eli Manning, we'll we'll talk about that. Uh, obviously, Saquon at running back. Right now, he's the 101 in most fantasy drafts. He's That's his average draft position. Wide receivers, you've got Sterling Shepard, who was re-signed. You've got Golden Tate. Both players being drafted, Shepard in the 8th, Tate in the 10th. I don't know if I understand that. And then Evan Ingram is a 6th round draft pick, the athletic tight end, high yardage tight end. And, look, there are Odell Beckham Jr.'s targets to go around. I am so afraid of Daniel Jones taking over on this offense. I think that's one of the biggest storylines for fantasy owners because with Eli Manning at the helm, he threw the ball. He may not have thrown every ball in the right place to the right <laughs> team, but they averaged 250-plus yards a game, which means with no Odell Beckham Jr., Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, somebody's going to have value in the passing game there with Eli. But what if it's not Eli? Yeah, that that's a big worry. I mean, look, Saquon is the 101 for most people. Even in high-stake money leagues, the lowest in the last month that, that he's gone is two. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're talking it's, about – It's hard to craft a narrative where Saquon – 
busts. Right, right, where he completely busts because you already saw him on a bad team. He's so involved in the passing game. He's actually – he has more points per play when they were down. He actually scored more fantasy points in the games that they lost. So that narrative is, is a little bit busted. But at the same time, if Daniel Jones comes in, you already have Saquon scoring almost five points less per game when Odell Beckham was out than when he was in. This is a really weird situation because I feel like the offense is going to be terrible, but I actually like a lot of the pieces. I don't know how to reconcile that. Evan Ingram is, you know, when he's been in games without Odell Beckham, he's been an absolute top end tight end. He could be relied on. I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility that he would be the number one target. I don't think this offense is going to be terrible. I'm going to go on record and say that. With Eli Manning at quarterback, I don't think it's going to be a terrible offense. I think it'll be a, a top 15 offense. Top wow. 15? Yeah, I think what – That's more than just not awful. That's that's a good offense. That would be top half, yes. But yeah. I'm saying Ooh. from not awful to good, there will be there, – That's a few steps, my friend. Uh, Yeah, I, 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 I believe that. I, I believe that you will have more uh, – Evan Ingram, you can start. We just talked about Washington, the wasteland of fantasy. You can start Saquon. You can start Ingram. I'd be flipping Tate and Shepard in a in the in PPR leagues from where they're going in drafts. I I'd, I'd rather have Tate than Shepard, but I think you might be able to start both players with Eli Manning. I mean, if that's the case, if if right. if you're right, they would end up ha having to be top end or top half to have four startable assets in their game. I do. I will no say no chance at top ten, but inside the top <laughs> fifteen. I believe in, <laughs> in your defense here. I believe in Pat Schumer. I think he's actually a really good offensive mind. I think he's going to do what's best for his personnel. Um, and, and he does have some weapons. The whole issue here for the Giants is Eli Manning. Is he getting older and worse? Is he's it not rushing into retirement, his words. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he has clearly not rushed into retirement. I believe you walk into retirement. I Maybe I, be rolled <laughs> into retirement. Be rolled. Yeah, uh, pick one, Shepard or Tate. Shepard. I want the down the field option. Sure. I think Tate. All right. Um, is that Jason? Do you go Shepard in the eighth versus Tate in the tenth? Because that's where they're being drafted. Or are you saying no, just heads up? No, just heads up. Uh, I think Tate because it's such a close coin flip, especially if you're in a PPR it's in garbage rounds already. R right, but I mean the tenth round. I'd rather wait two rounds and get the coin flip there. All right. Um, I don't think we need to talk a lot about Saquon. You, we, I mean, we kind of brought him up. You know who he is. The big point that Jason brought up: pass catching running backs. You don't need to pay attention to game script. Right. I mean, that pass catching running backs are on the field. They're great in negative game scripts, just like they're great in positive game scripts because they catch so many passes. I mean, that's that, also you know. really good. He he is excellent. He is a super freak athlete. If you don't remember that, his combine metrics were. He broke the combine scoring. He's basically, you know, he's like, oh, he's a 99th. Per I think he's a hundredth percentile. He's just he is 101st. the first. He is yes. the most amazing specimen right. at running back that has ever been. So and that to helps. refer to your game splits with Evan Ingram, just so people get the context, Jay, in in a PPR scoring format, he is nearly five points better per game when Odo Beckham is off the field. The only, the only thing I would hesitate there is usually in those games where you've lost Odell Beckham, you didn't have the replacement of Golden Tate. You yeah, know, you I mean? didn't plan for it. Right. You're he, now he had to step up into a role. And now the question is coming into 2019, is he going to be designed into yes, that yes. role? Because if he is, Evan Ingram could absolutely be this year's George Kittle in the sense that, you know, he he leads the the tight ends and yards if he becomes the number one target I don't I don't think it's going to happen but that's not outside the realm of possibility you're 100 percent right because last year we saw both we saw what it looks like when Ingram's heavily involved and we saw what it was like for him to be always open and never involved that was so frustrating. Mike would watch I, oh, Mike would goodness. watch the game and you'd be watching this uh, streaking Evan Ingram which Look, is frightening no it's frightening not, it's glorious yeah and he can streak all he wants. All always over open. the field. And always open, but not not game planned into the offense. Also recovering from injury a little bit. And uh, over the last five games, and this is the time when fantasy owners sometimes forget what happens because either you're out 
or you're paying attention to a narrow set of players. You're not watching week 16 and 17 as closely because you're not worried about waivers or picking up guys or trading for them. But Ingram was on fire to end this season. Yeah, in our Scott Fishbowl League that is a tight end premium, we decided to take Evan Ingram over O.J. Howard and, and take him pretty early. So, I mean, obviously he has the talent, he has the capability, he's got a good coach. It's just is, Will Eli look to him first. In the NFL next-gen stats, he is the absolute leader in average separation of, of 4. I, point, I saw that. Of 4.4. 4. Meanwhile – the uh, like, there's only two guys who average more than four yards of separation, and Evan Ingram is number one. Like he's he, he's a first round pick, first round pedigree, athletic monster. It, Step would, one, get separation. Step two, yes, get, Eli, throw it. To how the are open you that player. open yeah. all the time, and you're not getting the ball in every play? It's just such a mis mismatch. Yes. Can right. we trade him to the Saints? <laughs> oh, my just, goodness. Just oh, my goodness. Saints already have their Evan Ingram. Yeah, they can, get, but they can do better. They can do Evan Ingram. <laughs> We've got a couple minutes. Let's jump into the mailbag. 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 All right. Jackson in South Carolina writes in. By the way, if you have a question, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. That's what he wrote in? Yep. That's what he said. He said, Thanks, by the Jackson. way. He said, here's my question. How do I write in to the mailbag? <laughs> Go to the website, click the submit a question button, dial a voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Um, here we go. Jackson says, who do you think will be getting the bulk of the carries in Tampa Bay, and who would you rather have in a PPR format? Would you rather have Rojo or Barber? I am Be before you answer. Okie dokie. Sorry, sorry. No, that's fine. I want to know you're the rules. Answer. The suspense is killing me. You're going to answer it, but I want to just say something that I – that we know Barber and, and Rojo are both in our ultimate draft kit. I just wanted to throw that out there. Rojo's in the sleepers. Barber's in the values. Now you can answer. I would go with Peyton Barber. I believe that he is actually the better back. I think he will win the uh, bulk of the timeshare there and everything out of Tampa Bay, even though people have been singing some praises of, uh, Rojo, most people still believe that Peyton Barber will be the main guy, the first guy, the the leader of the timeshare. Do you agree with that, Mike? Peyton Barber. Okay. Here's a voicemail question. Hey, ballers. It's Steve calling from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Oh, bonjour. I know you guys have talked extensively about Todd Gurley draft position and redraft leagues. I'm just wondering where you would be comfortable taking him in a dynasty startup draft. Oh, here for me, guys. Love oh. the show. First of all, I'm sick to my stomach when I think about drafting Todd Gurley in a dynasty. Yeah. It, you asked specifically where would you be comfortable drafting him, and I the answer is is the twelfth round. <laughs> in terms of comfort, I'm not going to be comfortable drafting Gurley at all in a dynasty league because the nature of Todd Gurley's situation is the least comfortable one that I have that I can recollect in a fantasy football league over the last few years as the best Todd player ever yeah. in fantasy over two years also what in the world's wrong with his knee as the Todd Gurley owner in our main dynasty league <laughs> I can tell you the comfort level is imagine that you one ply you took <laughs> one you, ply you, comfort you took your boxer briefs and you put those in a – you just put them over and over in the washer, dryer, washer, dryer, high heat. 100% cotton. 100% cotton. And those things are half your size. Now put them on. <laughs> That's how you feel in your And dining? it's just tight. It's just <laughs> – you don't feel good. Here's – let me let me pose the questions to you guys, all right, on this. 24-year-old Todd Gurley, okay? Yep. Yeah. Or – so this is a trade. Or would you have – David Johnson at age 27. Oh, gosh. In a dynasty. Gurley. You would take Gurley over David Johnson? Gurley. Andy? When you say 24 and 27 like that. Look, I've yeah. been wondering if I would be willing to trade Gurley for David Johnson. That's right. But the problem and is, is you have. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I would take David Johnson. And the thing is, is with, with Gurley, with the knee, with what arthritis represents to the knee, with the workload he's had already, the 24-27, look, David Johnson missed an entire season due to a non-leg injury. That tread is not on his tires. He doesn't have a degenerative knee disease. 
The 27 and 24, I don't care. They're, they're the same age to me. Yeah, I mean, I think, so, think about it this way. David Johnson should have a better year this year than Gurley. I think we all expect that. Next, uh, I actually don't have it. I have him close. Yeah. Okay. I don't expect it. it. I expect it. Okay. Next year, I also expect David Johnson to have a better year than Todd Gurley because Todd Gurley will be another year on those tires. So I think I would go uh, David Johnson here. But, but the, so, where would you start? Where would you take him in a startup? I would take him in a dynasty startup? Yeah, I think I would still take him in the second round. I would take him in the second round. But that the reason I brought up David Johnson is because right now in Dynasty ADP, you've got Todd Gurley followed by Joe Mixon, David Johnson, and James Conner, and Dalvin Cook, who's almost a whole round later. Wow. I'm, I'm taking everybody but James Conner ahead of Todd Gurley there. If you're proje- I mean, look, it's all projection, speculation on Gurley. But the, what I'm hoping for from Gurley is a Camaro-like season. That's what I want from Gurley. The workload can come down. The team scores on the ground like the Saints do. And the passing game, screen game involvement. I'm hoping that, you know, that's the best case scenario. Now, if I gave you that, guaranteed, for two years and his career is done, are you taking that Gurley over DJ in a dynasty league? You get guaranteed yeah. two years top five production. Yeah, sure. Top ten production. Yeah, I would well, take those it. are different things. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like David Johnson's top ten. Yeah, it's, it's just tough, so man. difficult because it, you are it, renting. You're renting that knee. Here's here's the truth. Here's here's the truth. I'm I'm looking at players in a dynasty startup, and if I'm on the board in the second round where Gurley is going, there's no chance in the world I would ever draft him because I would take Stefan Diggs. I would take you know Julio Jones. I would take Keenan Allen. I would take Steph. Uh, uh, you take Adam, Stephon Diggs again. I would take him twice. But, like, I'm a wide receiver guy in Dynasty, so I'm taking all of these guys well over a Todd Gurley that I worry I don't get long term. So I'm not drafting Todd Gurley in Dynasty because he's not making Man. it to the fourth. I'm not comfortable enough. Oh. It's so hard because your mentality when you draft Dynasty is to build a team for the future. Even if we – I mean, we tell you all the time, grab some of those players that can get you value. Julian Edelman, super late, get him value. You still mentally, you're building a team for your future. Yeah. And arthritis is not going to be a part of my future. I've decided that at a young age. Mm. Uh, I might have arthritis. So no Sonny Michelle? Um, Ooh. <clears throat> no, he doesn't have arthritis. He yet. sure yes. does. Oh, he does? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on the way? No, I believe he already. Someone get these fellers a rocking chair. It doesn't, hasn't served me well. <laughs> it hasn't made a difference. Pristine deal of the day. Well, this is just plain theft, gentlemen. On pristineauction.com, Evan Ingram signed Giants jersey. $31.04 yesterday. Someone, what? this is the essence of an auction. You, you're allowed to steal things. I guess that's what an auction is. Yeah. Is that what that, I thought it was bidding against one another, but they have hundreds of daily. I you can get it, some steals. I thought it was always determined by the guy. That, <laughs> talk about this. $31 <laughs> sold. Evan Did they do Ingram. that on Pristine? Sign up, pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com, registration code BALLERS, and you will get to bid and find some sweet merch. So otherwise, uh, if if you're coming to the San Francisco show, you get to double up on BALLERS uh, tonight double up. at the independent, BALLERSLIVE.com. Um, otherwise, you will hear that San Francisco episode, which will have a very fun segment, very interesting segment. Uh, that will be out on Saturday, since we're three days a week now as a podcast in July, three days a week. In August, we're five days a week. And you can always get a bonus episode bonus. all year long at jointhefoot.com. So thanks for hanging out. Absolutely. Foot it's Glenn. been fun. It's been a whole lot of fun. If you're in San Francisco, make sure you get one of my patented Mike Wright hugs. They're delightful. A little bit sweaty. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.